I want you to look at something right now. Think of some major goal you want, or maybe it's one you're already working on, and you have experienced a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. You've experienced a lot of disappointment. Maybe you've already given up. And maybe you just need a little fire, a little encouragement to get back in the game again. He said, what shoot I want for the moon, at. because even if you miss, you'll be among the stars. Twelve months ago, I found myself flat broke, pennies in my pocket after having a pinnacle of success. I had some challenges in my life and in my business. I reached out to one of the greatest speakers of all time in one of my worst moments in my life. With nothing but hope and courage, I knew that without a doubt, I would one day be in front of the greatest speakers of all time. See, when I told everybody about that dream and that goal, in my darkest hour, they laughed at me. They didn't believe it, didn't see it. But at the end of the day, it wasn't their job to believe it. It was my job to believe it. My greatest gift to you with my one-on-one -on -one casual conversation with one of the greatest speakers of all time is that even in your darkest hour, you can still achieve the impossible, believe in the invincible, and have enough faith and belief in yourself that you will have what the great Les Brown says, the will to do it. It took 12 months and 32 minutes for me to do a sit down with Mr. Les Brown. And even though we had two conversations 12 months ago when I had pennies in my pocket and nothing but a vision to hold on to, that was manifested into my world. And my gift to you is to believe in something greater than you. Because in this one-on-one -on -one casual conversation, me and the great Les Brown are connected for the rest of our lives. It's not for everyone to see what you see or do what you do or believe in what you believe in. The only thing that matters is that you believe that you can do it. So I'm with, right now, right, this is insane, one of my mentors, he doesn't know it though, he'll know it in a little bit, and, and it's exciting because he's the, I think he's the best speaker in the world, I probably shouldn't say that on camera, but I believe he is. But I know that you're, you're up there. There are a lot of people who agree with you. There are. Yes. I won't. I, I agree with the millions that do. And so uh, we're just here talking about entrepreneurship, personal development, getting out of your own way. And one thing that I, I love the most about you and my all-time favorite, mm. you got to be hungry. Mm. A lot of people agree with that. I did that presentation in the Georgia Dome before 80,000 people. And in the early 1990s, and now it's it's more important than ever before because in order for us to to not only survive but to be able to achieve at a higher level and manifest our greatness and to make global impact, and individuals as well as organizations and businesses have to approach their business from that perspective. You have to be hungry, and to me, that is holding yourself to a higher standard looking for ways in which you can create an experience for your customers by the service you provide, the products, or how you deliver what it is that you see as your expertise, doing it at an exceptionally high level. Now, you said something that was awesome, you said global. Yes. A lot of people shrink their thinking, would you agree? And they think maybe like they can just tap into their city or tap into the state. How would you recommend someone that's in business that isn't thinking globally? They're just thinking, hey, if I can just get into a few different states, I'll be okay. Well, you can think that way, and, and it perhaps according to the kind of business that they're operating in, they, it could be that way. But if you're looking at going above and beyond what is commonly expected, then the standards are quite different. Henry David Thoreau said, do not go where the path may lead, go where there's no path and the trail. And so I think that the people today, who are looking at how do I begin to play full out. I just finished doing a tour with Richard Branson. And here's a guy that is dyslexic and 
has over 500 companies and, and still looking for ways in which he can take his performance to the next level. And I think he's a model for all of us of what the possibilities are. We're living in a time where we know that anything's possible. And so playing small to me is not what the option is. You know, I'm 69 years old and I'm going to my 50th class reunion and it's challenging for me because I'm not thinking in terms of retirement. I'm, I'm refired. I'm looking at putting all of the things that I've done in the past into the 69th year and, and poly that and take it to the next level. So looking for ways and how you can begin to become more productive but also achieve a level of mastery in the area where you have decided to plant your feet. That to me is something that all of us look at doing and just watching and, and because of this experience in this tour where I was in, in Adelaide and Perth, Australia, Singapore and Malaysia and, and, King, and, and um, in Hong Kong, that almost said King Kong. <laughs> but, the, the, the level of service, it was mind-blowing. You know, Americans have the tendency to believe that we are the dog that wags the tail when really, in, in truth, when it comes to customer service, we are the flea at the end of the tail that's being wagged. We don't have a clue about customer service. And when it comes to being competitive, these people take them to a whole new level. They are hungry. They are serious, unlike anything you've ever seen before. That's interesting. That's, that's intense. That's awesome. It's very intense. That's intense. Yes, and I love it like that. I can tell. Yes. And you look good for 69. Thank you so much. That's awesome. It's, I was talking to some of my friends, and, you know, for me, I'm 31, and I know I look like I'm 21, which I appreciate this is that very compliment. True. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, I became an entrepreneur when I was 23. And it was in the industry of, of uh, direct sales and network marketing. And I didn't even know what personal development was. I didn't even know, uh, with all due respect, I didn't know who you were. Yeah. However, um, when I discovered who you were, I became obsessed with learning everything that you were teaching. Because it's one thing, I think for me, I can hear what you say, right? I can hear, you gotta be hungry. You gotta want it, right? You gotta do things and, and take advantage of opportunities. But it's another thing, right, to listen to what you say and act upon it and get out of your own way. So. I use that as an example because I want to say thank you. Because as a 23 year old, to hear this and say, hey, listen, you can tap into that inner greatness. You can get things done. That took me to a one other level. Yeah, and, and I'm so glad that we were part of that whole process. It's, so really, it's about setting up camp beyond your comfort zone. Because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. Most people go through life doing just enough to get by. And we're living in a time that the demands are quite high, that the day is gone when you go to college, graduate, get a job, work for 40 hours a week for 40 years. The 40-40 plan is gone. There's no such thing as job security. So right now, if you can't find a job, you really have to make the, make the decision to create a job. And you can do that. A lot of people say, how do you do that? Well, first of all, don't ask the question. Because there are things that you're able to do that the mind cannot answer. That you must know that in your heart. Uh, when John F. Kennedy, former president, was asked a question, um, he asked the question, how do we go to the moon? And he was talking to a German scientist in the mobile down. And the room was packed with staff. And they were ready to record the conversation, take notes, and thought it would be a full-out presentation. And he only said five words. The will to do it. And he didn't say anything else. Dropped his pen. Everything comes out of that. The will to do it. Everything, yes, everything. And he was not, the president was not an engineer. The computer technology did not exist. But he called a news conference and said, We're going to the moon in 10 years. Did it in less than 10 years. But what was in his thinking was, We have the will to do it. And so we're going to do this. And so there are people, entrepreneurs, who had just figured out a way. They didn't know how they were going to do it, but they decided, I'm going to do this. And that, to me, where all the major inventions come from, the record-breaking um, performances that we see, someone who said, 
I have the will to do this, and I'm going to do it. That's powerful. I'm feeling the moment here, guys. That's powerful. So then what, what advice would you give to someone? Because I, I deal with people on a consistent basis, and, and I hear a lot of people say, you know, I've tried so many things. And then they beat themselves up with their self-talk. And I, I don't know if they're aware of it. There are three master keys to becoming successful today in this era that the late Peter Drucker called the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. Number one, mindset transformation, continuously. You have to expand your mind, you have to work on your mind, you have to have a regimen to retrain your mental blueprint. Number two, continuously expanding your skill set. There's not a shortage of opportunity, there's a shortage of capacity to take advantage of the opportunity to stand by. You know, people say that opportunity knocks on every door. It does not knock on every door. It stands by silently waiting for us to recognize it. And three, create a community of collaborative, achievement-driven relationships. So when you take those hits and you're going to have them, when you have the setbacks and the disappointments, and there are times you want to throw in a towel on yourself, you have people that will hold you accountable, but through those collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships, they will carry you through the storms of life. None of us make it by ourselves. Someone will be there that, as a dream holder and allow us to begin to go through. I think I've experienced that several times in my existence as, as an entrepreneur because I understand at 23 I was up here, at 27 I was down here. Yes. And so. It's a roller coaster experience for all of us. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. So it's part of the process. You will fail your way to success. Then what can you tell yourself when you feel like all hope is lost? No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. If you're breathing, everything else is a bonus. Try and lie on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my motto, and I'm sure there's so many other things people. Um, let's talk about really quickly just just tapping into what somebody can do right now to change their circumstances. They have to make up their mind. Make up their mind. They make up their mind. The commitment that this is not going to get the best of me. Mm. I'm going to get through this. I have a lady that I've worked with who's a quadriplegic. She's blind. Can't get out of bed. I'm paralyzed and we down. But she has a voice. And someone has to dial a phone for her and put it to her ear. And she built an organization from her bed. A multi level marketing organization. From her bed. Blind. Cannot move. But she has spirit. She made a commitment. I'm not just going to be here in bed feeling sorry for myself. I will myself to die. I still have life. I have a voice. And I'm going to use it. And so when you see something like that, you know that's possible for all of us. It's available. Is it easy? No. That's why I have a program called Choosing Your Future. It's called It's Possible. It's necessary, it's you, it's hard, it's worth it, it's done. Most people won't do the things that they're capable of doing because it's hard. I didn't do what I'm doing now because I told myself that it was hard. I don't have a college education. I was labeled educated in time. I never worked for any corporation. And I wanted to establish myself as an intellectual resource for corporate America. And so my conversation to myself, why would they hire me? I don't have any experience. There are people with PhDs and MBAs and years of experience. Why would they reach over them, hire me, and pay me $25,000 to come in and motivate them to do something I've never done? And that's a practical, logical conversation, and that it would be hard for me to do that. And so I didn't do it for 14 years. But there's something that I live by, that if you do what is easy, and that is give yourself a task, come up with excuses, um, justify why you're playing small. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. That's a good one, yes. And I, did, <laughs> and I just woke up. Don't <laughs> <laughs> get me started up in here. I'm feeling the bing bing moment right now. That was a good one. Oh my goodness. All right, so we're not going to keep you too long, but just wrapping it up because I know you're busy. Um, you, you just said, 
that we're just starting. At 69 years young, right, and barely any gray hair. Because, I, well, you, you see some now, but it will not be here tomorrow. <laughs> Homie don't play that. My kids say, Daddy, you know, you look distinguished with your gray hair. I said, 69, I'm not trying to look distinguished. I'm, I'm trying. trying to look young. Yeah. <laughs> so what's next? Where do you go from here? I'm going to train 100,000 voices in hope. Ordinary people, outside of politics, outside of religion, both of which I believe unwittingly polarize and divide people. Right. And teach them how to tell their story and how to have impact on transforming people's mindset, um, giving them an experience that will allow them to see themselves beyond their circumstances and mental conditioning and ignite them to perform at a whole different level. Just imagine if we had a hundred thousand Barack Obamas. Just imagine that. Yeah, communicators change the planet. I would not be here. I would not have been able to travel around the world just you know, and got up this morning after two hours of sleep and had this conversation if I had not learned how to one, transform my mindset, two, to be skillful communicator and to create an experience that it impact people's lives, and three, have a community of collaborative achievement, supported relationships to help me stay here and go beyond. So That's available to all of us. Well, I'm one of the 100,000, so we can go ahead and jot that down. All right. <laughs> so all I need now is 999,000. Well, right. It starts with one. <laughs> all right. Well, I appreciate your time. I'm Thank looking you. forward to, to seeing everything. We've yes. seen what you've done. We've heard your story. The best is yet to come. You've inspired millions. And, and just in closing, and I love, love, love this. There are so many, like the next generation, 18, 19, 20-year-olds, 15-year-olds, my niece is nine years old, she's you know, super starved, and she's, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur, you know? Yeah. And, and they're going to know who you are. It's, it's, it's amazing to me, because I didn't at 23. And look at me today, 31 years old, sitting here. And I wanna just touch on this lastly. I knew I was gonna sit with you. I didn't know when. I rehearsed the conversation. The will to do. Yes, and that's, everything comes from there. Everything. And most people are not willing to make that kind of commitment. Most people will give themselves a pass. Most people will come up with an excuse. Most people will say, it's too hard. You can't see it. The results aren't there. They don't have the support. The inner conversation is so powerful. You know, there's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, enemy outside can do us more. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you for who you are and how you show up on the planet. The world is a better place because God shows you out of 400 million stories. Done and done. That's my story, and I'm sticking Stick it to it. it. Mr. Les Brown. Thank you. Oh, come here. That if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it. If all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold poverty, famish or gold, sickness or pain or body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dogged and grim you besiege and beset it, with the help of God you'll get it. This is Mrs. Mamie Brown. Brown's baby boy, Leslie Calvin Brown, saying it's been a plum-pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. Thank you.